Uh, what is the volume of 2.50 molar lead to nitrate solution that contains 0 0.050 mole of lead to ion? So again, we have to look at these as we see them. So we see this and we see this. Which one of those is not a conversion factor? Mole. So we're going to start with our mole. 0500 mole PB2 plus. Because remember, big M means what? Moles per liter or mole per 1,000 milliliters, just in case that came along. So we're going to start with that. Now we have to figure out how many moles we have inside a mole of lead to nitrate. Well, this is not helping us. We need to know the formula of lead to nitrate. So if you didn't know that, you might have struggled. So lead to nitrate is what? All right, PB NO32, all right? PB NO32. So I take that, well, how many moles of lead do I have in here? How many? Four. One mole, PB2 plus, and now I have to go to lead to nitrate, all right? How many moles of that do I have? In what, how many uh, moles do I have of one mole PB2 plus? And how many moles of lead to nitrate? One mole. One mole at two nitrate. All right, so now we finish up with the stuff from the problem. So we're going to take this part right here, and we're going to somehow work it into that fraction. How could I do that? Let me cross off what I already have gotten rid of. How can I work that in? How could I work that in? Katrina, how could I work that in there? On top? No, no, bottom. Bottom, top, bottom, top. Which one? I don't know. Pick. Uh, top, bottom, I don't know. <laughs> what do I need to cancel? Where is this number going to go? 2.50. There you go. So it's going to be mole. 2.50 mole PBNO3. Two, and then on the top, I'm going to have one liter. Just checking if it was milliliters or not. All right, and then we get our answer. All right, our answer is, and we do that, tough one, zero point, zero, zero point, zero two, zero two, no. Zero, zero. Liter of PB NO32. Okay. You got to have those sig figs that are correct. All right, let's try the next one. We'll start back in black. All right. How many milliliters of a five molar potassium dichromate solution must be diluted to prepare 250 mils of a 0 0.10 molar solution? All right, so we're diluting. What do we have here? What do we call this right here? What's the term for that? <coughs> Not an M1. I need a term for the whole thing. It's going to be M1, yeah. But yes, what's the name of that 5.0 molar? Nothing you said is wrong, but I need to know the name of that. What is that called? If I was to go in the back and pull out this jug of stuff that was highly concentrated and I diluted it down so you could use it, what do I call that bottle? Stock solution. The stock solution. Stock solution. That's right in your notes. So N is always stock solution? No. Whatever the bigger one is. It's saying how many milliliters of this solution must be diluted to prepare the smaller one. Whichever one's the bigger one, 
the bigger molarity has to do that. So again, as you said, you guys told me M1V1 equals M2V2. How do I know that this is a dilution? Same, same thing, all right, the same. There's no different type of thing here, all right? So here we go. So I got 5.0 molar, all right, V1 equals 0 0.10 molar times V2, 250 milliliters. And it's asking me milliliters, so I don't have to change anything. It's already asking me that. So if I, if I divide those two, I'm, I'm gonna get milliliters. So what do I have there when I do that? What's the math there? V1 is gonna be? Five milliliters? 5.0 milliliters. Okay, that's an easy one. Now the next one, what do you think? Is that gonna be a hard or an easy? What do you think that problem's gonna be? M1, V1, or is it gonna be a stoic problem? Yes, this is a dilution. So it's gonna be M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Not R2, D2. All right, so here we go. M1, what's M1? Rachel, what's M1? It is 10.0. Yes, 10.0 molar. What's V1? 10.0 milliliters equals M2 and what's V2? 250 milliliters. You plug that, chug that into your calculator and you get in holiday festival spirit red, you get what? Varun, what you get? 0.4 moles. How many people agree with that? I like 0 0.40 a little bit better. Right. Two safe fits. 250 only has two. All right, pretty easy so far. I would, if I, it was me, definitely star this type of problem. Um, my, uh, AP gives you some problems that are kind of like that that they'll make you like think it's hard, but it's really not hard. So it's really simple math. Like I said, the first page of part two is so easy if you just think. And I gave you that little hint problem in these notes. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this set of notes, and then we can move on to our titrations. Titrations, all right, so here we go. All right, how many grams of calcium hydroxide are needed to neutralize 25.0 milliliters of nitric acid? All right, so we're gonna analyze it. The reactants are an acid and a base. So let's stop right there. Who can tell me every time that you have an acid and base react, what are you gonna get as a product? You're gonna get water and a salt. All right, water and a salt. Now we're just doing, we're just like premature right now. We're little babies into how we're gonna get into this KPA and all this other stuff. We're just very just getting the basics down of acid-base titration out, and we'll hit it harder later on, okay? The volume of the molarity of uh, nitric acid are given, and we ask how many grams. We can use the molarity of nitric acid to solve this. First, we find the balanced equation. All right, so let's do number one together. All right, I need some help. All right, calcium hydroxide, aqueous, plus, HNO3 make what's one thing that it makes everybody should know all right let's make it so um, it's easy for us to balance let's do this HOH which is a liquid we do HOH now we know how many OHs do we have over here so, so we're gonna need to do something here so it's a little bit easier to balance that way I don't care how you do it but it makes it a little bit easier to see. All right, and then uh, what's my other thing gonna be? Let's take a look. So I got uh, Holiday Festivus Green. Well, uh, I used this and I combined it with that. So I have this left and I need to combine it with that. What's it gonna be? 
C A, what is it? Yes, correct. C A N O three. Ah, yeah. Two. All right, now let's do our, our magic blue pen and let's balance this. All right, well, hydroxide right off the bat, I told you. So, what are we going to need over here? A two. Now, this is how I balance, just so you understand how I balance. I look at things, whatever I changed over here, I then go and change on the other side. So I change the hydroxides to match, now I need to make the hydrogens match. That's the next thing that I do. So I come over here and I put a two. Now I'm done. That's how I do it. Yes? Uh, in the homework, we have to use these equations and they weren't acid-base ones, so we have to figure out like which one is acid and which one is Mm-hmm. Yes, which will have to be memorized. Uh-huh. No. No, no, no. No, we haven't done, we haven't done, we're like precursor of reactions right now. We're not into reactions. We're getting into them for AP now. You have to have the, and I have a whole little way to memorize it. It'll take you four seconds. I have a way. Trust me. We're not there yet. All right. So here we go. So we have this, and we have to start with what is not a conversion factor. So let's look at our problem. How many grams neutralized? So I'm picking that one. What do you think? You guys agree? All right. So we're going to plug this down in here, and we're going to start with 25.0 milliliters of nitric acid. From there, how do I figure out what do I use next? Now, Katerina, not picking on you, but now you should be able to get this next part right. Because you tried it on the last one, now you gotta get it right on this one. I'm gonna use Holiday Festivus Green on this. Somehow you're gonna take this number right here and you're gonna plug it into that fraction there. What am I gonna put on the bottom? Are you sure? Tell me what this means. Tell me what this equals. What does this equal? If I was to pull out this M, what does it equal? 0 0.100 what? Mole over one liter or? Okay, now, when you're looking at that, how do you want to put that fraction? Follow the green arrow, how do you want to put that fraction into my other fraction? Aha, uh -huh. see, now do you see it? Say yes, Mr. Hayes, just to ease me. Thank you. All right, good. All right, now I feel good. I can go home today. All right, let's see. All right, now. All right, so I got this last part now. At this part, we have to use our balanced equation. So I'll put a little star here. Balanced equation. That's this step right here. Right there, from the balanced equation. So I'm going to find out calcium hydroxide, this, and right now I'm at this. So, Herman, how do I pull this in here? Perfect. All right, yeah, so I'm gonna switch it around because now we're switching. So I'm gonna put one mole of calcium hydroxide on the top. So I'm going to switch that off, cancel, cancel, cancel. And now I, I need to find out how many grams. How many grams? How do I do that? Calcium hydroxide 40, 40 and 32 is 72, 72. It's like 74.01 or something like that. 74.02? I don't know. Something like that. What'd you get? Anybody? 74.01. 74. 74. 74. 74. Something like that. What is it? 74.1. 74.1. Where do I put that? 74.1 gram CaOH2, one mole, because they're asking me for grams. Right, they're asking me for grams. And when you do that, you see why when I do the other stoic, I use proportions and when I don't, I don't use it for titrations? Because you're gonna need to do this 
So you save time doing it the other way for normal study. Just kind of putting it up. All right, so what do you get? 0. Point. Everybody agree with that? 9, 2, 6. What? Oh, 0. 0.0926. That might be too many. That might be too many numbers. I need some help. Help me out here. 0. 0.0926. Two six <laughs> grams calcium hydroxide. Okay, there we go. Now on your own, you're gonna try this one right here. All right, so try that one right here. I'm going to stop my recording. You guys are the best.